everybody. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Jean Anastasia, and I'm a biology professor and the program administrator for the Liberal Arts and Science General Studies program on the Emmerman campus. Sorry I couldn't be with you in person today, but I just wanted to share a little bit about some initiatives that I'm taking in my classroom to try to make my classroom more just and equitable and focused on uh, diversity and inclusivity. So like many of us, the events of the past year have caused me to reflect on my own behavior um, and how I could maybe make a difference. And obviously the sphere of influence that I have, like all of us, is in the classroom. So um, I did some reflecting on things that I've been doing in the past and maybe how I can do things a little bit better. So I came across this idea of relationship-rich education. I actually saw a talk by Peter Felton, you see on your screen, who's a history professor at Elon University. You see the book um, that he co-wrote there. And um, he talked about the fact that human relationships are probably one of the most important factors in success for students in college. If they can make connections with people and form relationships with human beings, with faculty, with staff, with other students, that really seems to help drive their success in college. And it's particularly important for first generation students um, and for students that maybe are underrepresented in their fields that have this feeling kind of struggle with the feeling of belonging there. Um, so I feel like this is something that many community college professors are already doing pretty well, given who our students are, that we really have this personal relationship, right? Small classrooms um, do a lot of outreach. You can see the quote that's on the page here, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. It's been attributed to John Maxwell, who's a leadership speaker, or even Teddy Roosevelt, but that's something that I have actually in the base as a tagline in my email for 20 years since I first started at the college. Um, and it really is defines my teaching philosophy that students really need to know that you care. And I go out of my way to try to make those connections with students. They all bring different backgrounds, different abilities, different obstacles to their success to the classroom. So I try to connect and always be positive and helpful they're struggling, not be judgmental, but to reach out often and see what I can do to help where the obstacle is, what we can do to fix things and try to help with their success. Doesn't mean changing our academic standards. It just means trying to lift everybody up to them and give them what they need to be successful. So lots of ideas on how to do this. One really simple way I figured I'd share in this short video is just this idea of a check-in period at the beginning of your class. So before you start actual lecturing on content, you just have a, hey, everybody, how's everybody doing out there? Any struggles, any homework issues, any content issues, anything you read that's interesting, anything that students want to talk about, it breaks the ice. It allows students to get to know each other so that they form relationships, not just with you, but with other students, which help them get that feeling of belonging. And as a science professor, there are many groups that are underrepresented in STEM fields that sometimes have what we call imposter syndrome, that they feel like they don't belong there. So forming these relationships can really go a long way to being more inclusive in your classroom. So that's one thing that I've been doing in my classes. Um, the other thing is trying to develop a way to bring more diversity into the classroom. So as a STEM professor, I've talked to a lot of other faculty about this. Um, some faculty feel like, you know, diversity and focusing on racial issues or social justice is out of the realm of a science classroom or a STEM classroom because it's not part of the curriculum that we teach. But there are ways that we can be more inclusive and to promote diversity. So I've been developing what I call inspirational investigator inserts. It's really taking something that I've been doing for a long time and just making sure that I'm doing it, it to include a much larger um, group of scientists that I'm spotlighting, really focusing on making sure that it's a very diverse group of scientists that are being spotlighted. So the idea is to just highlight current research that's being done that will help students learn a concept or a topic you're already covering in your classroom. And I do this, and a lot of textbooks do this as well. They'll highlight graphs and papers and scientists that are showing, right, the concept that you're trying to get your students to learn. So it's a good way to promote scientific inquiry and students understand how science works. And if we're just a little more cognizant of who those scientists are and go out of our way to include diversity in those scientists, then we can actually inspire students of all backgrounds, maybe to see themselves in those scientists and be inspired to, to pursue science as a career. So um, you include a photograph so they can see the person, but you really focus on their research and you're focused on 
uh, highlighting research that already speaks to a topic you're covering. So this isn't something that's like a separate thing where you're doing, um, we're gonna focus on, you know, black scientists today. It's just a seamless part of my lecture. I just make sure now that the research that's being highlighted is being done by a larger, uh, more diverse group of scientists. There are a lot of people that have had similar ideas. So there's lots of resources out there to find these scientists and the research that they're doing. Two great websites are listed here, Project Diversify and Scientist Spotlight Initiative. I'm gonna show you those in a second, but I just wanted to show you what one of these PowerPoint slides would look like. So this is just highlighting um, Jared Ally, who's an assistant professor of entomology studies bugs um, at Penn State. And um, he has some cool research showing that these plants actually secrete chemicals that attract insects that eat the insects that are feeding on the plant roots. So we talk a lot in my class about ecology, about chemical defenses and against predation and competition. And so this fits really perfectly into a really cool system that speaks to how plants can defend themselves and um, trophic interactions and things like that. So it demonstrates important points that I try to cover. And now I'm just highlighting a scientist that's from a group that's typically underrepresented in the field. So, so the, and I have lots of these. I've been trying to develop more and more of them um, each semester to insert in the courses that I teach. So if I can just show you what these two websites look like, this is Project Diversify. Um, it's really great site, you can read all about the background of how it came to be, but if you go to teaching materials and overview, then you can actually um, kind of explore here. You can pick a topic. This is for biology. Um, say I'm teaching population ecology, and I want to see if there's any scientists I can highlight if their work speaks to any concepts I'm trying to cover. You search for that, and then you just click on whatever scientist um, is shown. And these slides are actually downloadable. The slides are already made on Google Slides. So you can just download them where it highlights their research. It has background information about understanding the research and biogeographical information if you chose to highlight that about the scientists. Um, Science Spotlight Initiative, it's a little bit different, but it's also a searchable list. So say I'm teaching college, and again, maybe I wanna highlight, again, somebody that's teaching botany from covering plants, you can teach more, you can search more specifically, but you don't have to. And then you get this list of scientists here, and then you can just pick somebody. <clears throat> and again, <laughs> they'll tell you information about them. And when you go to their site, it will, um, they want you to register. It's free to do that. It'll actually bring up um, some information about them. You can also use this to assign students an outside of class assignment to go research one of these scientists so they get to understand that science is done by diverse people. So, so that's some of the stuff that I've been doing. Um, hopefully it inspires you to make some changes to be more inclusive and focus on diversity in your classroom. Thanks for listening, guys, and I will see you all next time. Bye.